Hey there guys, this is part 3 of AQA's AS Level Further Maths uh, Specimen Paper 1. Here we're doing questions 9 and 10. Let's do this. Okay, question 9A1 says to sketch. On the Argand diagram down below, the locus of points satisfying the equation mod of z minus 2 is equal to 2. So, hopefully, we've all seen this equation of a circle before. Mod of z minus z1 is equal to the radius of the circle where Z1 is the center of the circle. So if we compare what we have in the mod of Z minus 2 to mod of Z minus z1, we can see then here z1 is equal to 2 plus 0 i. So there's no imaginary part here to the center of the circle. So this then is a circle centered at 2, 0 on the organ diagram with a radius of 2. So, that's going to look something like this chap here. So, here's our centre at 2, 0. Might be a good idea to label this point up here above. So that's going to be 2, 2, and then this one down below is going to be 2, minus 2. There we go. Jobs are good for part A. Okay, then part B says, given that mod z minus 2 is equal to 2, and the argument of z minus 2 is minus pi over 3, we want to express z in the form a plus b i where a and b are real numbers so for this i'm going to do most of the working out if not all of it on the diagram that we just drew so we know that the complex number z minus 2 lies somewhere on the circumference of the circle this is the locus of all points that satisfies mod z minus 2 is equal to 2. Now we're told the argument is minus pi over 3. So that means the vector z minus 2 comes out from the centre of the circle to a point below the x axis. And that again is because we have a negative angle. So, this is our complex number, z minus 2. Now what we're going to do is turn this into a cheeky right angle triangle. So, now we can find the x and y coordinates. So I'm going to put in minus pi over 3. That seems a bit weird to have a negative angle but that is the argument. That is what we substitute into our trig parts. So using Pythagoras we know that x uh, which would be the adjacent 
to that angle. And don't forget, we also know the radius of our circle, which is also our hypotenuse, is 2. That's the length of our vector of our complex number. So our hypotenuse is 2. So we also know we can call this horizontal distance x and the vertical distance is y. So using SOCTOA we know that uh, cos of minus pi over 3 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that is equal to x over 2. Therefore, I'm going to write it down here, x is equal to 2 cos of minus pi over 3. Now, doing the same thing for y with Sokotoa, we know that sine of minus pi over 3 is equal to y over 2. So, very similarly, we get y is equal to 2 sine of minus pi over 3. Now remember, z minus 2 is a complex number, so z minus 2 would be x add i y. So z minus 2 is 2 cos of minus pi over 3 add 2 i sine of minus pi over 3. Okay, so if we put those into our calculators, we get z minus 2 is equal to 1 minus root 3i. So that's what z minus 2 is equal to, but we don't want z minus 2, we want z. So the last thing we need to do is add 2. And we have z is 2, sorry, 3 minus root 3i. Jobs are good. Okay, question 10a is a bit of a monster. So we want to prove that 6 add 3 lots of the sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus 1 times r plus 2 is equal to n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3. So it's going to be a nice big test of our algebra skills. First of all, we are only going to worry about what is inside of the purple brackets. So we're not worrying about the 6 at the start, nor about the fact the sum is being multiplied by 3. We're just going to play with the sum itself. So, the first thing we're going to do is expand the brackets r plus 1 times r plus 2. So, we get the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared plus 3r 
plus 2. Now, we can split that into three separate sums. So a sum of the square term, a sum of the R term, and also a sum of uh, all the twos that we're going to get. So we can write this as the sum of R squared and the sum uh, now we could write this as the sum of 3R but we can take that 3 out and say it's had 3 times the sum of our from R equals 1 to N and then we've also got the sum from R equals 1 to N of 2 good times ok so now we need to plonk in our definitions of each of the sums so the sum of squares uh, is n over 6 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So that's the sum of squares and then the sum of the r terms. And remember we've got that 3 on the outside. So that's going to be add 3n over 2, lots of n plus 1, and then that final term at the end, we're adding on n, lots of 2, so that just becomes 2n. So, that at the moment is our sum of r plus 1 times r plus 2. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to start getting the other stuff in the whole sum involved. So remember, this sum was being multiplied by 3. So what I'm now going to do is multiply what we've got by 3. So this is going to give us then 3 lots of the sum of from r equals 1 to n of r plus 1 times r plus 2. So, if you multiply n over 6 by 3, you get n over 2. So we've got n over 2 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 and then 3n over 2 times 3 is 9n over 2 so we got 9n over 2 times n plus 1 and then at the end that 2n or multiply by 3 to give us 6n. So that is how the sum 3 lots of the sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus 1 times r plus 2 looks. Okay, so now finally we're going to put the whole sum down. So we're now going to have 6 add 3 times the sum so this is going to be exactly the same as what we just wrote down but that's going to be a plus 6 at the end so we've got n 
over 2 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 uh, and 9n over 2 lots of n plus 1 and 6n and 6 so there is our sum in all its glory now what would be really really helpful to us here is if everything had a common factor at the moment that isn't true but can we do anything clever with these two terms at the end 6n add 6 those guys have a common factor of 6 so we can write 6n add 6 as 6 lots of n plus 1 and then all of a sudden all three terms have a common factor of n plus 1 so now we can start to factorise this guy a bit so we can now say this is equal to n plus 1 which is a good start because we wanted one of those now this is multiplying n over 2 times 2n plus 1 add 9n over 2 add 6 so hopefully that's starting to look a bit nicer okay so now inside of the big square brackets we want to expand everything and see what happens so we're going to get n plus 1 lots of okay n over 2 times 2n is going to give us n squared and then n over 2 times 1 is going to give us n over 2 and then we got add 9n over 2 and then the plus 6 at the end so we've got n plus 1 times n squared now n over 2 plus 9n over 2 is 10n over 2 which is 5n and then we got the plus 6 at the end one of the nicest quadratics you'll ever see because we can factorise it to n plus 1 lots of n plus 2 n plus 3 we've proven it jobs are good in QED ok guys that's it for this episode in the next one we will finish this paper with questions 11 and 12 a link to the whole paper playlist is down below in the description as well as the paper itself really hope this has helped give us a thumbs up get subscribed say hey down in the comments take care guys